Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The dark and brutal Indiana Jones sequel that got criticized for its violence and morbid nature when it came out. But that didn't stop us kids from loving it, as this is one Indiana Jones movie that goes all out and doesn't hold back. Yes, this entry sure has guts. Released in 1984 and once again directed by Steven Spielberg and produced by George Lucas, this time archaeologist Indiana Jones teams up with nightclub singer Willie Scott and kid sidekick Short Round, where they discover a small rundown village in India, in which a fuggy cult stole the village's sacred stone, known as a Sankara stone, which caused the village's crops to dry out. The cult also stole the village's children to use them as slaves. Indy, Willy, and Short Round travel to Pankot Palace to try and retrieve the sacred stone and the children, where they come face to face with an evil demonic cult led by the brutal and insane Molaram, who performs many terrifying sadistic rituals. In this edge of your seat, Indiana Jones adventure like no other. And here I have the Japanese laser disc release of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which I discovered at my last archaeological dig. So join with me today as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, my own personal favorite Indiana Jones movie. Let's check it out. Number 10, a dark prequel inspired by a real life divorce. When George Lucas created the character of Indiana Jones and pitched his idea to Steven Spielberg, the original plan was to make the indie movies a trilogy. And after Raiders of the Lost Ark was a massive success, a sequel was inevitable. Lucas got to work on the script, but didn't want to do a repeat of Indiana Jones going up against Nazis. So he set Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in 1935, one year before the events of Raiders, technically making the Temple of Doom a prequel. Although, I would argue that Temple of Doom still could have been a traditional sequel and just not use Nazis. And the fact that the Temple of Doom is a prequel to Raiders is really inconsequential, in the sense that it's not about the growth and development of Indy, where we see him become the man that he is in Raiders of the Lost Ark, thanks to his adventures in Temple of Doom. No, he's exactly the same guy going on death-defying adventures. Lucas, by his own admission, was in a really bad mood when he wrote Temple of Doom, as he was going through a divorce at the time, and that a lot of that negative energy transpired into Temple of Doom itself, making it a more dark and morbid Indiana Jones entry. However, some of the darkness of Temple of Doom was by grand design, as Lucas also claims that he wanted Temple of Doom to be like the second Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back, in that that chapter was considered to be a dark and gloomy chapter in the original Star Wars trilogy and was actually very popular and praised for it. However, Temple of Doom didn't quite get that same level of praise. But I think that they are different kind of darknesses. To me, The Empire Strikes Back is dark on an emotional level, whereas Temple of Doom's darkness is more of an out-to-shock-you visual kind of level. Number 9. Rejected Ideas There were several ideas floating around from both Steven Spielberg and George Lucas as to what the second Indiana Jones movie should be. Spielberg wanted Marion Ravenwood, played by Karen Allen, to return, who was Indy's love interest in Raiders, along with the character Abner, who is Marion's father and was mentioned in Raiders but never seen. However, it was decided to follow in the footsteps of the James Bond movies and to give Indy a different love interest in each film, where we get the character Willie Scott, who was played by Spielberg's real-life future wife, Kate Capshaw, who, unlike Marion, who was tough, Willie Scott was much more of a screaming damsel in distress, an aspect of the film that does often get criticized. 
Lucas wanted to start the movie off with Indy taking part in a motorbike chase on the Great Wall of China. And as the adventure continues, Indy finds a lost world island inhabited by dinosaurs. Yes, for all those who complain that Crystal's skull had aliens, just remember, even in the early 80s, Lucas wanted Indy coming face to face with dinosaurs. The script was to explore other Chinese mythologies, such as the Monkey King. However, the script had to be completely changed, as the Chinese government refused the production to film in China. Lucas's next plan was to write an Indiana Jones adventure that revolves around a haunted castle in Scotland. But at that time, Spielberg had just worked on Poltergeist and didn't want to do another movie involving ghosts. So it was here that Lucas got the idea of basing the story around a demonic thuggy cult in a temple in India, which led to the story that we got. Despite the fact that Spielberg were going to say that he didn't really have much love for Temple of Doom, he seemed to have loved the concept of the movie when it was first pitched to him, likening it to a surreal fever dream. And yeah, I guess the film actually does feel like a surreal fever dream. Number 8. Many of the action sequences were written for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, yeah, believe it or not, but a lot of the action scenes that are shown in Temple of Doom are leftovers from Raiders of the Lost Ark that didn't end up getting filmed, probably due to time and money. This includes the famous edge of your seat minecart scene. The scene was originally intended for Raiders of the Lost Ark, in a scene where Indy and Marion escape with the Ark on a minecart in order to escape the Nazis. Another famous action sequence in Temple of Doom involves the scene where Indy jumps out of a plane with a raft, which then proceeds to slide down many slopes and rough terrains. This sequence was also originally intended for the previous movie, where in Raiders, this plane was taking Indy to Marion's bar, where it gets hijacked by bad guys, where Indy leaps out the plane with the raft and slides down many mountain slopes, which actually takes him all the way to Marion's bar. As mentioned, the intro of the movie was to take place on the Great Wall of China, but instead it took place in a Chinese nightclub called Club Obi-Wan. Yes, a nod to the character Obi-Wan Kenobi. Harrison Ford is seen wearing a white tuxedo with a red flower on his lapel, making this the only time we see Indy dressed up looking suave. This was actually paying homage to Sean Connery's white tux attire that we see him wear at the start of the Bond movie Goldfinger. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is the only indie movie in the franchise to use the Indiana Jones logo in the title sequence. All the other movies have the title shown in more subtle fonts. And the movie starts off with a musical number of the Willie Scott character singing Anything Goes in Mandarin. George Lucas wrote this sequence and Spielberg was really enthusiastic about it as he had never directed a musical before and was fascinated with the concept of doing so. And let's not forget of course that the start of the movie has a cameo from Dan Aykroyd, who that very same year in 1984 was working on his own mega hit blockbuster, that of course being Ghostbusters. The fact that the Temple of Doom starts off so differently to your typical Indiana Jones movie sets the groundwork that this is going to be a different kind of Indiana Jones movie. Number 7. Indiana Jones's original script writer refused to return. Writer Lawrence Kasdan had previously collaborated with George Lucas, where he co-wrote The Empire Strikes Back where he would then go on to write the script for Raiders of the Lost Ark. So naturally, Spielberg and Lucas were keen to get the writer to return for Temple of Doom. However, when Kasdan discovered that the plot was to revolve around black magic, child slavery, human sacrifices, and demonic cults, he turned down writing the script, finding the story to be mean, horrible, and quote, nothing pleasant about it. So instead, Lucas hired Willard Hike and Gloria Katz to write the Indiana Jones sequel. Both Hike and Katz had previously written American Graffiti for Lucas, and they were specifically hired thanks to their knowledge of Indian culture. The 1939 Cary Grant movie Gunga Din acted as a sort of template for Temple of Doom. It's easy to see that this inspired a lot of what we see in Temple of Doom, as both movies are actually very similar, as they both revolve around sinister thuggy cults. Seriously, if you want to, look into that some more. The two movies are very similar, to the degree that you maybe could possibly say that Temple of Doom is a remake to Gunga Din. Number 6. Other Last Minute Changes 
The script writing process for Temple of Doom had started in 1982, and during that time Spielberg had massive success with E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Lucas was scared that Temple of Doom's production may have lost Spielberg, as he was now a massive director, and he knew that he needed him to direct Temple of Doom. But lucky for Lucas, Spielberg was still on board to direct. It was decided to give Indy a young child sidekick, where we get Short Round, played by Jonathan Key Kwan. I always found Short Round to be a lot of fun, as he seems so enthusiastic and like he's having a ball. To me, he always represented the children watching the movie who wanted to join Indiana Jones on these adventures. And considering that a lot of children loved Raiders of the Lost Ark, this actually made a lot of sense. And he never comes across as being obnoxious. Kwan auditioned for the part alongside 6,000 other young actors, one of whom was his brother. Spielberg chose Kwan as he liked his personality. However, originally Indy's young sidekick was to be a young princess, but Spielberg didn't like the idea. There was also to be a subplot where those who drink the Kali blood became zombies with supernatural abilities, which was an aspect ditched from the final story. I mean, Temple of Doom is already pretty extreme as it is. Just imagine it if it also had zombies running around the place, as well as the movie's original title, which was to be Indiana Jones and the Temple of Death, which, as we all know, would change to Temple of Doom, probably because Temple of Death was considered a little too morbid. Number five, India denied filming. So considering that Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is set in India, the production had planned to film in North India and aim a fort. The production supposedly even found an Indian palace that they really wanted to use for filming. However, in order to get permission to film, the production had to give the Indian government a copy of the script. And upon reading it, they found the script to be offensive. And in order for filming in India to take place, a list of changes had to be made to the script as well as the Indian government being able to make cuts to the final film. So instead, the production shifted to Sri Lanka, specifically a city called Kandy, which doubled for India. In order to help certain scenes look like they were taking place in India, matte paintings and scale models were used, specifically the small village and Pancock Palace. Additional studio filming took place at Elstree Studios in England, which is where Raiders of the Lost Ark was filmed. In fact, 80% of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was filmed on sound stages. At that time, Elstree Studios had nine stages, and Temple of Doom took up eight of them. So it seems at this time round, the production had to be really creative with bringing the location to life on the big screen without actually filming at the designated location. Number four, Harrison Ford had serious health issues while filming. During the filming of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Harrison Ford had developed a severe spinal disc hernia, which is said to have been the result of Ford having to ride an elephant for those scenes at the start of the movie. Although there are some claims it was from a scene where Ford had to perform a somersault. During the filming of Temple of Doom, Ford's condition had increasingly worsened, leaving him with an extremely painful back to the point where he could barely stand up. But despite this, Ford was still on the set to film the movie. To accommodate his pain, a hospital bed was brought on set so Ford could rest in between takes. It got to the point where there was no other options. George Lucas had to shut the production down and had Ford flown to a hospital in California where he would spend over a month recovering. So in the meantime, with Harrison Ford temporarily out of the picture, stuntman Vic Armstrong would perform several shots as Indiana Jones in order to keep the movie's production on schedule, and Ford would make a full recovery and return to the set for filming. And trust me, as someone who has had chronic back pain, it's no walk in the park. So kudos to Harrison Ford for at least still trying to film while being in lots of pain. That's pretty badass. Number three, marketing. When Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, Kenner released a string of action figure tie-ins for that movie, which although people look back at them fondly now, they didn't really catch on at the time. So for Temple of Doom, LJN took over and released three action figures, which included Indiana Jones, Molaram and the thuggy that Indy fights. These figures were a larger scale than the previous Raiders lineup, and they were bulkier, but they still didn't quite catch on, probably due to the limited character selection. 
There apparently were plans to release Short Round and Willie Scott, but never happened. There was also an Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom arcade game, which then got a Nintendo version, where players get to play as Indiana Jones on an adventure to get the Shankara Stones and defeat Molaram. What makes this confusing is that there were actually two different versions of this game, one by Mindscape and the other by Tengen. This actually led to a lawsuit, where it was ruled that the Tengen's release of the game was unlicensed and had to be pulled from shops. I've never played this game before, but from reviews that I've read and seen, the game was confusing and generally pretty horrible, so I don't really have a desire to play it. Apologies to those who are looking forward to my thoughts and opinions on it. Marvel Comics also released a comic book series based on Temple of Doom. Marvel had previously published the comic book version of Raiders of the Lost Ark, which was so popular, they also published an original Indiana Jones comic book series with new adventures. So naturally, they were on board for the Temple of Doom comic. The comic is bright and colourful and nicely recaptures the scenes and look of the movie. Heck, the cover of the first issue itself looks really epic and kind of like it could have been a movie poster. So if you want to experience Temple of Doom in comic book panel format, then you've always got the Marvel comic books. Number 2. Deleted Scenes There are several deleted scenes from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom which didn't make it into the final film, mainly due to pacing reasons. One deleted scene was actually featured in the as mentioned comic book, where after Willie and Short Round get caught when Indy tries to retrieve the stones, Willie makes a run for it, where she makes it all the way back to Indy's room, where she is confronted by the Prime Minister of the Maharaja of Pankot, where she begs him for his help, only to discover that he's part of the thuggy cult. This scene was actually filmed, hence this screenshot. Also, remember how Short Round uses fire on Indy in order to snap him out of being the evil version of himself? It's never mentioned how Short Round knew that fire breaks the Cully blood spell. Well, there was an earlier scene where while Short Round was chained up as a slave, he witnessed a fuggy guard catching on fire, where he was no longer under the evil spell. The most famous of the deleted scenes, and probably the most important, was a scene showing how the children escape from the underground temple, in which Indy makes a ledge over the fiery pit, which the children use to run across to freedom. The sequence ended with the ledge catching on fire and breaking before Indy, Short Round, and Willie can use it, which explains why they then have to use the minecart to escape. Yeah, this really was actually kind of important when you think about it. Number 1. Deemed Too Violent Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was released with great anticipation in May 1984 and would go on to make $333 million on a $28 million budget. Although it made $56 million less than Raiders of the Lost Ark, it was still hugely financially successful. However, the movie got a lot of negative backlash from critics and parent groups, who thought the movie was too violent, sadistic, and gruesome for a kid's adventure movie. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and fellow Spielberg-related movie Gremlins were both released in 1984, and both movies were pointed out for being too horrific and inappropriate for the child-friendly PG ratings, which they were both rated. This backlash prompted Spielberg to create the PG-13 rating, in which movies can avoid a more restrictive R rating, but also have a bit of a kick added to them. And thus, the first movie to be released with the new PG-13 rating was Red Dawn. For many years, Temple of Doom was considered the weakest link in the original Indiana Jones trilogy, the odd one out that isn't Raiders or The Last Crusade. Even Spielberg and Lucas have treated it like the black sheep of the family. But to be honest, growing up, this was my favourite Indiana Jones movie. And to this day, it is still my favourite indie movie. You have to admit that this is a sequel that takes risks. It tries something different and goes all out to be a shocking, action-packed spectacle. If Raiders of the Lost Ark was a happy, swashbuckling adventure, then Temple of Doom is a morbid horror movie. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I've always found its darkness and shock value to be exciting. After all, we see Indy finding a terrifying underground city engulfed in fire and death. They could have easily have just called the movie Indiana Jones Goes to Hell, because that's kind of exactly what happens. 
I love Temple of Doom because it has guts. It takes chances. It goes a little extreme, but it never stops being a fun adventure. The next movie, The Last Crusade, was looked upon more favorably upon its release. But let's be honest, as good as that film was, it really does play it safe as not to upset anyone like Temple of Doom did. The movie tries very hard and is successful as being just like Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's almost like the movie is screaming out, we're very sorry for that previous movie, here's another Raiders. Growing up, Temple of Doom was like the forbidden indie movie. The dark and twisted one. And because of that, I love it and find it to be the most interesting in the series. And thankfully in recent years, Temple of Doom has received more and more appreciation from fans who have gone back to see it and realized that it's a great movie and underappreciated for its time. A similar thing would happen to Tim Burton's Batman sequel, Batman Returns. And just like that movie, I think Temple of Doom's biggest crime is that it was just ahead of its time. Especially considering now most franchise movies are all about being dark and daring and pushing boundaries and not being afraid to be violent. Well, Indiana Jones already did that all the way back in 1984. So if you want an indie adventure that hurts a little bit more than the other ones and isn't afraid to show blood and push boundaries, then Temple of Doom is the Indiana Jones movie for you. You won't be disappointed. I stand by my claim that Indiana Jones' biggest crime was that it was just ahead of its time. But regardless, you can't deny the movie is pretty badass and takes no prisoners. And although Spielberg in particular would go on to not really like the movie very much, I'm still really glad that he made it as it sure gave me a lot of joy in my childhood and still gives me joy now. Anyway, I'm Minty and I'm off to find some fortune and glory. See ya!